What's good y'all, it's Mr. Bradley. Today we're talking about setting up templates in FL Studio on Mac, so let's get into it. All right, first things first, let's set up from blank. So let's just go new from template, empty. Now it's completely fresh. Okay, so first things first, what I like to do is create filter groups for the channel rack. Um, I use drums, melodies, and samples and the reason i do that is just so it keeps your workflow organized you know if you have a whole bunch of sounds um in and out your channel rack it can get confusing if you don't have these so i just like to do it just to keep, keep things clean and organized and the reason i'm putting samplers on here is because if you end up if you only have one sound one instrument right here and you end up deleting that it's going to, I don't know if it's a bug, but it basically gets rid of that filter group. So that's why um, I put the sampler on there just to prevent that. Okay, now, um, if you have plugins that you use every single time, and you know for a fact, let's say maybe FL keys, you're using that for to start with melodies every single time you load up a project, then you might as well put that onto um, the channel rack and then that way you have it loaded up you don't even have to load it just something to make your workflow quicker so i'll take that off but you can do something like that if you want to now going into the mixer window so what i like to do is always set up some effects buses and that way i have verbs and delays always ready to go as soon as i load up a project so Let's do that now. The way I like to set it up, um, I'll just go to compact view real quick and that way we can scroll all the way down to um, 100 right here. And I'll use the 101st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th as my um, effects bus sends. And I, the way I just highlighted those, you click on the first one you want. Now hold command click and drag and you can highlight multiple at once now i'm going to dock these to the right that way they're always right here no matter how far i scroll left or right you'll see they always stay right here and that's very convenient okay now let's take the 100th command click drag and go all the way over to one now the way that we route all of these to these sends we just right click here, side chain to this track and repeat that process. And now you'll see, once I'm done with this, that every single insert we just highlighted, you see right here, they're always going to be ready for you to send signal through them. And um, the reason I didn't send the rest 106 through 125 is because if you ever need to add any more um, effects buses, you know, you might need some um, parallel compression, any any more type of parallel processing. I, that's why I just keep these. Um, and you're never really going to use 100 tracks anyways. But I keep these in case I need to add them to the dock. So yeah, now I'm just going to change this back to what I had wide three. Okay, so now I'm going to set up my master chain. And if you guys wanted to know how to put plugins in here into these uh, this favorites list, this drop down menu, so that it just saves you some more time, the way you do that, you go to more plugins and search whatever the plugin you want to load. I'm going to put um, my SSL compressor here because I don't have that loaded yet. So I'm actually going to change the size to all right, but. So now what we do, we go over to this tab right here, right? You go to this plugin tab, the rightmost one, you go to your effects and whichever tab you want to put it in, since this is a compressor, I'll put it in dynamics. You click on that tab, right? Now you see all the, your dynamics plugins are open. Okay. All you have to do is click on this drop down and add to plugin database, but this is the trick. So whichever parameters 
um, you last let on the plugin before you add to database, those are the ones that are going to load up every single time you go here and choose from your list. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sort of default these to um, parameters that I want every single time that this plugin loads up. So I'm just going to drag um, the attack over to 30, drag the release ratio down to two and everything looks good. Cool. So now when I add this to the database, and flag it as a favorite. Now, every single time you'll see when I load up a new instance of that plugin right here, you'll see that it just defaults to those parameters that I had when I added it. So that's a helpful tip um, just to save some time. You wanna make sure that those are just, uh, those are parameters that your go-to, you know, you feel comfortable with starting out. And if you mess up, let's say um, I actually didn't realize that um, if you already knew about this trick of putting them in this drop down, there's an easy way. All you have to do is just delete that plugin from this list right here. OK, you would just delete the file and basically you do it again. You just go back, add it and um, make sure the parameters are the way you want it. OK, cool. Now that we have all of these effects bus sends docked and ready to go everything is routed to them i'm going to set up some um reverbs and delays that i like so yeah I'll come back once i get that done all right bet so just finished setting up all of my sends i got my hall my plate ping delay space delay and stereo delay all right and now let me actually go set up my master chain so i'll be right back after i do that all right now that i'm done with that um, you can just check out the plugins I use right here. This is more or less the chain I like to go through um, with every single beat that I make. And you'll notice I have them all bypassed. The reason I do that is just to save on CPU. Um, and then obviously, you know, as soon as you want to want to use them, you just turn them on and they're ready to go. But I like to have them here loaded up because I know for a fact pretty much every mix I'm going to use some combination of these plugins and i do leave fruity limiter on just because um it's you know very low cpu and um it's just a, a nice ceiling so i know if i'm clipping or not or to prevent clipping all right dope so we got all of our template pretty much set up and ready to go we got the plugins we want loaded we have all of our effects buses set up we got our master chain set up the only thing we have left to do now is just go in and save the project as a template and the way to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go to File, Save As. Okay, now go to your FL Studio Projects folder. And inside that folder, there's going to be another folder right here labeled Templates. So you're gonna to wanna to save your template, whatever you wanna call it. I just will call mine for this instance, we'll just call it um, Default Test. Okay, now once you save that, what you're going to want to do is go to options, general settings, and your default template will be right here, but this is actually what you have to do first that I forgot about. So now that we've saved our template, make sure you've done that, save it in the correct folder in the templates folder. You're gonna have to close FL Studio, okay? Now, as soon as it closes, we're just going to open it right back up. And basically, that's just going to give the application time to read our templates folder. So now we can go back into options, general settings, and we'll see right here, default template. We want to make that the template we just created. And for me, in this case, it was default test and startup project. If you have it on default template, now all you have to do is just open file new and then the top option will be your default template now you'll see as soon as we load this up it'll be everything that we just set up so we got all of these plugins right here we have all of our inserts routed to these effects bus sends and we have our filter groups on the channel right 
so that pretty much sums it up for this video if you guys liked it if you got some useful information out of it please make sure you hit the like button make sure you guys are subscribed for more content like this more tutorials more fl studio on mac videos so i'll see y'all soon peace